Hi, it's Neil from Image Restore here, and today I'm going to compare two scanning softwares. That's ViewScan, and that's the software that pertains to be usable with just about any scanner, and the Canon Scan Gear Utility, or the IJ Scan Utility from Canon. And in particular, it's in relation to scanning multiple images on a flatbed. Sometimes we obtain photos of different sizes, perhaps a credit card size, perhaps smaller, and postcards and larger and smaller and strange and weird shapes that happen throughout the photography years. We want to scan them all on our scanner. We arrange them to be the best fit so we can get the best of the space. And we want to scan them all at once. And let's have a look at how the two companies approach the scanning of multiple photographs on a flatbed. Let's start with the ViewScan software. And this is the paid for version. I think it costs around about 70 quid. And let's have a look at what we've got to do. We go to file and default options. And that resets everything back to the default. And Hamrick, the producers of this software, have a page dedicated to how to scan multiple photos on a flatbed scanner. And after you've set the options back there, to default, you go to the Inputs tab and select Standard Options. And from here, your scanner should be detected. It should show you the scanner there. And the mode Flatbed Media should be selected to Color and the Media Size select to Maximum and the file type set to JPEG. That's all the options you need in there. You can Select your default save folder up there and your naming conventions here if you like. Go to the crop tab and in the crop tab they suggest we use auto and auto offset should be ticked or set to on. Multiple crop to auto and you can choose your preview area if you wish in that option there. And then you can hit the preview or the scan. Now I've got a number of photographs on my flatbed. Let's take a look and see what happens. So ideally I want to be able to select all of these photos and perhaps change the resolutions of the smaller one because I want to print that at a certain size and the bigger one I might want to reduce the scanning resolution because I don't want to print that as big. And I might want to change the auto correction on this image here because it's faded. Uh, so let's have a look and see what we can and can't do. So it's automatically says we have two, it says on there, photos. It's highlighted the first one and unfortunately it hasn't highlighted any at all. It's just drawn a box randomly in the middle of the screen. There's a, an arrow here that seems to imply we can change the size. So let's drag that around to fit that box there. Also seems to have made some lightness and adjustments there fairly quickly. So can I further adjust this, the scanning resolution of that or the color settings to this particular selection? So let's have a look. Uh, input, media color, that's the input, the automatic inputs, preview resolution, scan resolution. Okay, so I want to change that one there to 1200. So hopefully that one's now set to 1200. And Let's have a look at a different image now. Let's, how do we select? Oh, uh, right, that's odd. Um, no, nope. if I press control key and, oh, I can draw a box around that one, that's good. So can I press control key and draw a box around this one? Oh, no, I can't. Um, what about this one? No, what does shift do? Do you think that would help? Uh, let's try. Shift, um, no, that just moves that around there. Um, Oh, very strange. Okay, well, it appears that you can't select any other photos. Um, what about photo two? Can I change anything on that one? Let's have a look. Color. I can change the color bands. Um, there's no sort of dust and scratch options there or fading corrections as such. Nothing in the output. Preferences, mm, nope. Filter, restore colors, restore fading, okay. Right, spot on. Um, 
Let's try dragging around that and restore fading. Because oh, it's just done to the whole screen. Very confusing. Don't really know what's going on with this software. The obvious place to look for cropping individual photos would be in crop, but I think this automatic software basically says you can just do two and it's going to do two and it's going to do it whatever it likes and it's as complicated as that really. You know, it leaves you with no option to do anything else other than do what it says. So in comparison, let's go over to the Canon scan utility and it's got my scanner in there and the this is the Scanon IJ scan utility and you can select scan gear from here and I'm going to hit the preview again just to show you how it comes up from the start and this gets a rubber banding box around the images and I don't want one image so I could either rescale it to fit this image here or I could have deleted it and started all over, started afresh. So start by dragging a box around the image we want to scan. Doesn't take long, two seconds. Okay, and then over here in the image settings, I can adjust all of these options for this bounding box. So I've got reduced dust and scratches. I've got all of the fading options here for a quick fix or the start of an improved scan. Can select the grain, backlight, D-screen. All this stuff and up here I can select how big see how big it's going to be in the uh, input it says at currently at 2400 dots per inch this image will wind up as 9000 by 6000 well, I don't really want it that big so let's scan at 600 so now I've got an image of 2000 by 1000 odd that'll do fine and what about adding another image into this. So do I select control and drag a box? Yes, I can do, or I can just literally click and drag a box and that will add images as we go. So let's just quickly scan these, or rather outline these. And then I can change the settings. If I just click on this, I can then change the settings here. So I want to scan that one now at 1200. That gives me an output of 5,000 by 3,000. And I want the fading correction as none but I want a bit of backlight correction. And this one here, fading correction none, bit of backlight correction on there. And I want to scan that one at, well, no, 100 DPI, there we go. Gives me an output of 500 by 400. And those are all individual settings on each of those images. Really didn't take very long. I could do that, no problem. And of course, if you maximize your space on this flatbed area here, Put another image in here, maybe. You could scan that area and you could fill your bed and use the best option there. And there's nothing interfered with that. There's nothing broken about that. That's very simple and easy to do. And then of course I would hit my scan button and that would scan them all into my default folders where I'd selected and I could work on them in Photoshop. In comparison, of course, we've tried to do that in view scan and uh, well, I'm a bit baffled really. You spend 70 quid on software and you expect to be able to scan more than one photograph on your flatbed. It's a scanning software for scanning, okay? So in terms of being flexible there, where well, the basic thing you want to do is scan and you want to scan a lot of images. You don't just want to scan one. Um, who wants to scan one photo? You don't buy scanning software just to scan one image. So. I think I missed a trick there. Uh, maybe ViewScan have something to say about that. Maybe ViewScan can explain just how you go about scanning each photo on a flatbed in multiple images with multiple settings because ultimately it makes your life easier. Uh, you may want to scan a very small photo at a high DPI so you can print it very big. You may want to scan a very big photo um, at a lower DPI because you don't want to print it very big. And it saves you all that work afterwards. And uh, yeah, I think that should be a basic feature of any scanning software. So I hope you like the comparison there. Let me know if you liked it or if you didn't like it. And um, I'll see you again next time.